very kind to give us bonus sale <laughs> extra credit in the last 5 days the the sale is on and uh, the 5 days of bhishma panchaka starting off from tomorrow uh, in america and actually the tithi has already entered here in atlanta so we are in the first 1 hour <laughs> out of our 120 hours of sale 24 hours times 5 I believe it was 120. So the first one hour out of the 120 hours of Bhishma Panchak has already started. So I feel very honored and privileged that you have kindly engaged my tongue in the start of Bhishma Panchak Vrat in the service of the Vaishnavas. Um, I was, um, I was um, told by Arjun Sakha Prabhu that there was a program at the, at the, at the home setting, but then devotees are um, you know, very kind and extra merciful. <laughs> Please forgive me for all the inconvenience that this change in plan may have caused to your local temple plans and temp home program plans. Um, we were supposed to meet tomorrow, but then Krishna had his own plans. And thank you, Rajraman Prabhu, and sorry for inconveniencing. I think you had to go back and forth with the temple and make some changes. So before I begin, I want to seek all your blessings and best wishes um, i want to uh, be able to serve all of you this evening we have heard from shastra that only when vaishnavas are pleased then their heart becomes joyous and when their heart becomes joyful they offer blessings and with those blessings we make some advancement it is not by any mental gymnastic it is not by coming and quoting a million shlokas or singing a fi sing singing 500 songs in one hour that we are going to get Krishna's mercy. It's not about how scholarly the talk is. It's not about how ornamented it is. It is only the sincerity and the intent. So please, all of you, kindly accept whatever little uh, I have to offer today. And I hope uh, with the kindness of your heart, you will empower me. So we will start off by hearing little bit on the life of Srila Gorkishor Das Babaji Maharaj, because this is very, very important for us to note that the Bhishma Panchakvrat starts off from Ekadashi, which is tomorrow, Ekadashi, Dwadashi, Trayodashi, Chaturdashi, and Purnima, five days, the last five days. And on this day of Ekadashi, which is called as the Uttana Ekadashi, the start of Chaturmas is called Devashayani Ekadashi, the, the Tithi which marks the going off to sleep of Mahavishnu, Deva Shayani Ekadashi. And the day when he wakes up is called Uttana Ekadashi. Uttana means to wake up or to turn sides. That is Uttana. So it starts off with Deva Shayani and ends with Uttana Ekadashi. His sleep ends. So on the day of Uttana Ekadashi, Srila Gorkishor Das Babaji Maharaj, a very powerful self-realized Acharya in our Brahma Madhva Gaudiya Sampradaya, uh, he left this world. So the disappearance day and the appearance day of great Vaishnava Acharyas is a day to celebrate. Sometimes the question could be that the appearance day we understand is a day of celebration. Then why is the disappearance day of Vaishnava Acharyas worthy of celebration? It's a very important question. We see on the calendar, we have the appearance day of Krishna. We have the appearance day of Ramachandra. We have the appearance day of Mahaprabhu. And astrologically speaking, we can even calculate the exact tithi when they departed. We can exactly calculate the point, the day or the tithi, when Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went back to the spiritual world, or Krishna went back to the spiritual world, Ramchandra went back to the spiritual world. But no one ever celebrates the disappearance tithi of going back to Godhead or going back to the spiritual world of the avatars of uh, Ramachandra or Sri Krishna or Mahaprabhu. We never, we never celebrate that. The only thing we celebrate is their appearance. Why? Because when the avatars appear in this world, their divinity is revealed then and there. When the avatars appear in this world, their divinity is revealed. Like, for example, when Krishna entered the womb of Mother Devaki, Indra with all his associates, he came and offered prayers in the Garbhastuti. So Indra could recognize Indra could recognize and all the demigods could recognize 
that Krishna, the Supreme Lord, has entered the womb of Mother Devaki, right at his birth. When Ramachandra appears and enters the womb of Mother Kaushalya, it is described in the Ramayana that all the demigods in their celestial planes were in the sky, offering flowers, welcoming the Supreme Lord into this world. So even before he gives Sakshat Darshan, as he enters the womb of his mother, the demigods know. Even we find in the pages of Chaitanya Bhagavat, when our Shachinandan Gaurahari, Nimai Vishwambhar, he enters the womb of Shachi Mata, we find all the demigods, they come as disguised human beings or sometimes even as shadows, as quote-unquote ghosts. They are coming and taking darshan of the womb of Mother Shachi. So the point we are trying to make is when the Supreme Lord appears in this world, as soon as he enters the womb, his divinity is revealed. Everybody knows. So there is no need to have a separate tithi to celebrate the disappearance of the Supreme Lord because right at the appearance, his divinity is revealed. So that's the most important tithi anyway. But for Vaishnava Acharyas, in contrast to the avatars, now the avatars we mentioned, when they enter the womb, that's when their divinity is revealed. So you don't need any other tithi. You don't need to mark. Although astrologically we can calculate this is the date Mahaprabhu departed back to the spiritual world. Krishna went, wound up his pastimes. We can calculate. The astrologers can. But it's not put on the calendar. You see, none of the Gaudiya Vaishnav or Vaishnav calendars will say this is the disappearance tithi. Because right at the appearance, Janmashtami, Radhashtami, Gaur Purnima, Ram Navami, Sita Navami, we know their divinity. This is for the avatars. But for the acharyas, it is little different. When the acharyas enter the womb, nobody knows. <laughs> Even the demigods don't understand their divinity. And where is the proof for this? The proof is in the seventh canto we find that same Indra who recognized Krishna entering the womb of Mother Devaki. That same Indra, he went to kill Prahlad while he was in the womb of his mother, thinking that this is going to be another demon. When Indra saw the demoniac activities of Hiranyakashipu, he was thinking that the sun will also just follow suit. The fruit doesn't fall very far away from the tree. So if the tree is poisonous in the form of Hiranyakashipu, the fruit in the form of Prahlad may also be poisonous. But what happened? He was wrong. He could not recognize the Acharya. He went with his sword to kill the, the child in the womb. And it took a great Vaishnava in the form of Narada Muni to come and hold the hand of Indra and say no. The father may be demon number one. Tat sadhu manye asura varya dehinam, the best among demons. But the son is the best among Acharyas. Swayam bhu narada shambhu kumara kapilo manu pralhada janako bhishma. That Pralad Maharaj is the best among Acharyas. Even quoted in the Brihad Bhagavata Amrita by Srila Sanatana Goswami to be a very great soul. Um, in the pages of the Bhagavatam, Pralhad Maharaj has been described as Krishna Graha Grihitatma, as he who was completely controlled by Krishna and whom Krishna completely controlled. In our astrological chart, we will say that, oh, we are controlled by Saturn or Jupiter or Mars or uh, a conjunction, a meeting of two planets or three planets, etc. That's what we are controlled by. Some astrologers may say, oh, he is Graha Grastha. This person is influenced by the planet. But what Graha was Prahlad Maharaj Grastha by, caught by? Krishna Graha Grihitatma. He was completely controlled by a planet called Krishna. <laughs> and not just a planet, a whole universe, a whole cosmic creation called Krishna was controlling Prahlad Maharaj. So the point is, Hiranya Kashipu was demon number one. But Prahlad Maharaj was devotee number one. And he was in the womb of his mother. And that Indra, who could recognize Krishna while being in the womb, could not recognize Prahlad while he was in the womb of his mother. So what is the point that we are trying to make? The point we are trying to make is that when the Supreme Lord enters the womb of his mother, at his appearance itself, his glorious position is revealed to the whole world. But when great Vaishnava Acharyas, they come in this world, they enter their mother's womb and they appear in this world, even at that time, people don't know their position. When Srila Prabhupada appeared on 1st of September, 1896, who would have known that he is the Jagat Guru Acharya, the Senapati Bhakta? Jodi Papi Dharma Chadi Dure Deshe Jai, Mora Senapati Bhakta Jai Vetathai. <laughs> it has been described in Chaitanya Mangal that when sinful people will give up the place of pilgrimage and go and hide, 
like cockroaches in Atlanta, then what will happen? Mora shena pati bhakta jai veta thai. Oh, when sinful people go and hide in all corners of the world, then the commander in chief will come and hit the hit spray. And all the cockroaches will come out, out of their hiding. And they will all become devotees. <laughs> Srila Prabhupada was like the, the Pied Piper. You know, there's a very interesting middle age story from uh, Hamilton, a, a, a town in Germany. We may have heard of this story in our school, the story of Pied Piper. There was a city which was completely racked and, and there was a complete havoc created by rats. And then there was one interesting personality who came with his pipe or with his flute and he played and all the rats got attracted <laughs> and they got, at, got attracted and they went behind this Pied Piper and he was uh, very attractive. So we could say that uh, I'm not talking about all of you, but I'm talking about myself, that when the rat like mentality is there of not being attracted to anything, then Prabhupada and his representatives come as Pied Piper. They play the flute and they attract the rat like hearts of the conditioned soul. So the point is when even Prabhupada appeared or great Vaishnavas appear, at their appearance, their divinity is not revealed to the whole world. But however, when they perform a whole lifetime, they sketch a whole canvas of beautiful painting, colorful strokes of their surrender are seen in life. Then at the time of their departure, they leave behind the whole world, uh, drowning in the uh, tears of separation. The whole world who did not recognize these acharyas at their birth, that same world will now cry in the separation of that acharya. So between the appearance and the disappearance of great Vaishnava acharyas, both are glorious, no doubt about it. But it is at the time of their departure, their disappearance, their actual glory is told to the whole world. Because at appearance, everyone thinks they are a child. But at their disappearance, they understand, oh, what a big loss the world is incurring at this point. It is a loss that cannot be, um, in, in no way it can be um, compensated or refilled, you could say. So similarly, we find, in this mood, we find our Gaudiya Vaishnav um, calendar, Dinadarshika, as it is called, the daily calendar. It has the appearance and the disappearance of great Vaishnava Acharyas, but only appearance of avatars, because at their appearance, their divinity is revealed. But for Vaishnava Acharyas, very few understand at appearance, but the whole world understands after they are gone. So this is why disappearance. So we, we went through the circle of this whole discussion to try to understand in our heart why there is a culture of celebrating the disappearance of great Vaishnava Acharyas. Because this question could come. You know, great Vaishnava Acharya has left and you are having a big cooking, a big feast and having a big celebration. No, we are celebrating his reunion back to the spiritual world. Great Vaishnava Acharyas leave the spiritual world and they come here for us. And now when they go back into the eternal realm of Radha and Krishna, it's time for us to celebrate. And at the same time, it is time for us to cry that they did so much for us, but we could not do anything for them. So disappearance is also very important to celebrate. It's called Viraha Mahotsava, Vipralamba Utsava. It's the day of um, not great mourning, Yes, tears of gratitude, but also happiness that how come we became so fortunate to be touched by this mercy in our life. This is very important. One time, one disciple of Srila Gorgovinda Maharaj came to Srila Gorgovinda Maharaj and said that, uh, uh, Gurudev, my heart is very hard. I can't cry for Krishna. And Srila Gorgovinda Maharaj said, oh, it is like a stone. Why you cannot cry for Krishna? Try to cry for Krishna. He said, I cannot cry for Krishna. Then Srila Gorgovinda Maharaj said, Oh, then you should loudly cry that I am not able to cry for Krishna. This is my situation. So then that disciple mustered some courage and he said, Gurudev, but I cannot even cry uh, about not being able to cry for Krishna. Then Srila Gorgovinda Maharaj said, Don't worry. The day when I will leave, you will learn to cry. you're not able to cry in separation from Krishna, and if you're not able to cry that I'm not able to cry, then don't worry. The day when I will leave this world, 
your heart will melt and you will cry. So we understand that great Vaishnava Acharyas, they play a role in our life, which even Krishna is not able to play. What is that? Krishna is not, ma- Krishna is not able to make us cry. Krishna is not able to make us cry. He's sitting in our heart as Paramatma. But do we get liberated <laughs> just by the presence of Paramatma? No, we don't. There have been so many lifetimes we have spent with Krishna in our heart. We were pigs, pig bodies, Krishna was there. Sometimes horse bodies and Krishna was there as Paramatma. Sometimes tree bodies and Krishna was there. Sometimes Indra and sometimes even Brahma and sometimes in hell and Krishna was there as Paramatma. Did we get out of the cycle of birth and death? No. But when a pure Vaishnava comes in this world and melts our heart, attracts our heart towards devotional service, that's when the road of going back home, back to God, it gets revealed. So we will never be able to repay what our Acharyas do for us. Even Krishna cannot do that. Hmm? It is very interesting. Very, very interesting. We find in the pages of the Ramayana, Mother Sita was kidnapped merely in the presence of Sri Ram. Sri Ramchandra went to ra- running behind the golden deer and Mother Sita was kidnapped. And Sri Ramchandra tried so hard, searching for Mother Sita, befriending Sugriva, building a bridge, so many things, right? Fighting, waging a war against Ravan. This is what it took for the Lord. But how did it how did it all manifest? Who rescued Mother Sita? Was it Ram? It was actually Hanuma. It was Hanuma. We are in the position of Mother Sita. We are in the position of Mother Sita. If we hear this very attentively, we can draw a very uh, common uh, metaphorical similarity. We as the super soul, uh, we as the individual soul, Jivatma, are in the position of Mother Sita, kidnapped by Ravana in the form of Mother Nature, Maya Devi, and kept in the Ashokvatika of this material world. Let's think very attentively. In the mood of Mother Sita, the living entity is kidnapped by the ten-headed Ravana. Who is that? Maya Devi. And placed where? In the Ashokvatika of this material world. Where? In separation from our eternal Lord, Sri Ram. Ram is present here, but does that free us from the Ashokvatika of this world? No. It takes Guru Tattva, pure Vaishnavas to come. Hanuman, sent by Ram, crosses the ocean and comes to Ashokvatika to liberate Mother Sita. It takes Guru Tattva. It takes the current of the Vaishnava Acharyas, sent by the Supreme Lord, crossing over the ocean of birth and death to come into the Ashokvatika of this material world. And give a chance to the Sita-like living entity to now go back home, back to God. And when that happens, that's when we get liberated. So what Krishna doesn't do directly, Guru Tattva does on his behalf. This is why, Samsaradavanalelidhalokatranayakarunyaghanaghanatvam Krishna is compared to the ocean. Krishna is compared to the ocean. And we are all compared to living entities who are burning in a forest fire. This is what we sing every morning. Samsara, Davanala, Lidha, Loka. Samsara means material world. Davanala, forest fire. Lidha, burning. Loka, living entities. Living entities who are burning in the forest fire of this world, Tranaya, to liberate them, Karunya, out of mercy, Ghanakghanatvam, the clouds form. Praptasya, what do they get? They get water. Now we know the water cycle story in the pages of our science textbook, that the clouds are formed from the water found from the ocean. The ocean water is what evaporates and becomes cloud. And then that cloud moves by its own free will and pours down its rainwater and extinguishes forest fires. Right? This is what we know. So who is the ocean? That is Krishna. Praptasya kalyana guna aranavasya. In Sanskrit, the word aranavam means ocean. So Krishna is the ocean. And Krishna is the ocean of mercy. He Krishna, karuna sindhu. He is the ocean of mercy. 
and the cloud is guru tattva what do they do they take the ocean they take the water of mercy from the ocean called krishna and they move and pour that mercy on top of living entities who are burning in the forest fire of distress in the forest of this world this is what the first verse of the guru vashtaka means that i am burning my heart is burning with lust my stomach is burning with hunger tomorrow is ekadashi so it's burning even more <laughs> my mind is burning with the fire of anger in this way and externally there is fire of criticism there is fire of fault finding there is fire of envy then there are problems caused by others this problem caused by mother nature in the form of the different tsunamis and earthquakes etc this problem caused by the mind so there's total fire we being living entities burning in the forest fire of distress in the forest of this world want the water of happiness which the ocean called krishna can give but alas when someone is burning in a forest fire he doesn't know how to reach the ocean what can he do please tell me what can he do nothing he can't fly he can't escape he can jump out his situation is like the snake in the forest fire the birds can fly the deer can jump over but the snakes get burnt so our situation is like the snake we can jump over the fire we can fly over the fire so we are burning and we know the ocean can help us krishna out of his mercy but the ocean doesn't come to the forest and the living entities in the forest can go to the ocean but at that time inconceivably beautiful mercy manifestation of krishna's is seen in the form of the clouds and look at the nature of the clouds the clouds take it from the ocean come over the forest pour it and extinguish the forest fire and as soon as we come out alive and safe we look up the cloud has gone already there's no time to even look up and say thank you the cloud has come pour down water and gone there's nothing we can do and interestingly did we phone did we call and get the 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 cloud on on demand can you just come this is where i am stuck no the cloud just comes on his own accord comes on his own accord the cloud is so selfless he has compassion towards those burning in the forest fire and is so transparent he doesn't claim anything of his own takes water from the ocean so the water belongs to the ocean brings it over the forest pours it down and leaves so what does this mean this is guru tattva this is acharya tattva the acharyas are like this they are intermediate between the living entities who are burning in the forest of this world and krishna who is the ocean of mercy this is what we are supposed to meditate every morning as we sing samsara dava nalalidha loka pranaya karunya ghana ghanatvam ghana ghanatvam means cloud and praptasya how did the cloud get the water praptasya how did it get kalyana guna kalyana guna means compassionate quality arnavasya from the ocean the cloud gets its nature of compassion from the ocean and comes over the forest selflessly pours it down saves the living entity and just leaves so the acharya comes in this world takes the water of compassion from the ocean called krishna out of his own sweet will without we calling maybe shila radhanath maharaj is like the only example who hitch hikes and finds god but how many of us did that do we have like a journey home of our own no we just you know we didn't we didn't even want god in the first place we didn't even do bhajan to get him maharaj was so determined so determined otherwise it's not possible <laughs> if we actually think where we were at that age and what we were speaking and what we were seeing and what we were doing um you know it's not even worth a discussion so we did not call the cloud of guru tattva they take the water from the ocean called krishna's compassion out of their own sweet will they come over the forest they pour and relieve us of all our suffering by giving us the path and when we come out of the forest which means liberation from this world we see the acharya has already departed which means the disappearance of the acharya is very significant because he is like the cloud he appears pours in water and departs and we don't even realize 
can the person burning in the forest fire ever be able to reciprocate in any way to the cloud never absolutely never what can we do for shrila prabhupad was the question that prabhupad disciples asked prabhupad what can we do for you shrila prabhupad said just accept what i have given practice it in your life and share this fortune with others this is all that we can do we cannot do anything beyond that so therefore why we are mentioning all this is because we can definitely go through the past times and we can hear yes kaur kishor das baba ji did 1 2 3 4 5 and wonderful we had a nice time with all the stories that's definitely there but it's important to take one step behind take a back step and think about who are these acharyas and what do they mean to me in my present life it's very important acharya tattva is very important if there is any tattva which is higher than krishna tattva that is guru tattva because without guru tattva we can't understand krishna we cannot understand krishna is there anyone who can understand krishna without guru the answer is no not even god <laughs> not even god this is why when krishna comes in different incarnations he accepts guru comes as mahaprabhu he accepts guru he comes as krishna he accepts guru in the form of baguri rishi and teacher in the form of sandipani muni comes as ramachandra he accepts guru comes as vyasadev he accepts guru as narada muni and he comes as buddha doesn't accept guru and therefore we don't accept his teachings <laughs> even if god comes even if god comes and gives a philosophy without surrendering to shri guru we respect the incarnation but then we don't accept so much of his teachings but when he comes and he accepts guru then we accept him also and his philosophy snapayasi payasi kshamita pashu ghatam keshava dhrita buddha sharira jaya jagadish hari shila jayadev go swami glorified buddha but then he said as far as the philosophy is concerned now <laughs> hari krishna we rene di ji ab because he got it through self enlightenment which is great for god it is okay but the principle is when the supreme lord comes in the form of vyasadev even if he is bewildered and confused when he accepts the shelter of an acharya in the form of narada muni then we accept his philosophy and his work as shrimad bhagavatam to be the greatest valmiki muni was ratnakar he was a he was a plunderer a thief before in his pre valmiki days but then he surrendered to a great vaishnava acharya in the form of narada muni and we accept his philosophy of valmiki ramayan which is the adhikrit ramayan which is the first ramayan so this is to make our heart completely fertile to the understanding to receive that our acharyas our are our life if krishna comes on one side and our acharya parampara come on the other we will align with our acharya parampara we should align with our acharya parampara because krishna we may or we may, we may not be able to get him prabhupad said the prajbasi sometimes they may not have guru but they can still get krishna because of past life bhajan but in general it is not possible anyone who tries to get krishna may not get him may or may not get him but anyone who tries to get krishna through the lotus feet of guru tattva acharya tattva will always get krishna always possible it is definitely a possibility yasya deve para bhakti yatha deve tatha gurau tasyate katita yartha prakashante mahatmana very very important point so therefore with this understanding we should uh, we should uh, accept the life of any acharya in our heart so uthana ekadashi marks the tithi of a very great vaishnav in the form of shri lagor kishor das baba ji maharaj who is shri lagor kishor das baba ji maharaj our beloved shri la prabhu pads guru dev om vishnu pad ashtotra shat shri shrimad prabhu pad bhakti siddhant saraswati thakur his guru dev nitya lila pravishth om vishnu pad ashtotra shat shri shrimad साक्षात वैराग्य मूर्ति श्रीला गौर किशोर दास बाबाजी महाराज सो इज द परम गुरुदेव ऑफ श्रीला प्रभुपाद श्रीला प्रभुपाद गुरुदेव गुरुदेव वी आर ऑल अवेयर ऑफ फ्यू पैस टाइम्स ऑफ श्रीला गौर किशोर दास बाबाजी महाराज सो प्लीज फॉर गिव मी इफ आई एम स्पीकिंग समथिंग दैट वी हैव ऑलरेडी हर्ड मेनी टाइम्स देयर इज वेरी लिटिल दैट आई नो माय सेल्फ सो आई एम ट्राइंग टू जस्ट शेयर व्हाटएवर लिटिल आई हैव रीड और आई हैव हर्ड 
Srila Gorkishor Das Babaji Maharaj <laughs> was a very different personality compared to every other personality that we think of in the box of a devotee. A devotee should be like this, he should speak like this, he should dress like this, he should act like this. This is how he will walk, this is how he will eat, this is how he will sleep, and this is how he'll wake up. We have some idea about how devotees are, and 99.99 percentage of these fixed up devotees, they definitely are in that, that box of our understanding. But sometimes we find there are some acharyas, they are like the lion. <laughs> They are like the lion. They walk in the forest of this world freely because they are the king. <laughs> and Srila Gaur Kishore Das Babaji Maharaj in the box of different rules, we will not succeed because he was an avadhut. What do we mean by avadhut? Sometimes the word avadhut can be used out of context also. But Avadhut is a person who is transcendental. Who is transcendental. He is not someone who is just clumsy. Sometimes we see there is someone who is clumsy with their clothes, you know, like socks on the floor, shoes somewhere else, and books are thrown here, and the food is half eaten, and the person may say, oh, he is like an Avadhut. Sometimes the word Avadhut may be used as someone who is clumsy, who is not organized, but that is not the actual understanding. The word Avadhut means someone who is Dhunoti Sarvam Ridhisanya whose heart is completely pure, completely transcendental. He is so, so transcendental that he lives in that world while living in this world and therefore sometimes may not be relatable to people around. This is the meaning of the word Avadhut. He is transcendental to all the rules of Dharma, all the rules of Ashrama and Varna. He may act in ways that we can't understand, but it is not because of being in the mode of ignorance. But it is beyond, it is because of being transcendental to the three modes. So, Srila Gorkishor Das Babaji Maharaj appeared in a place called Faridpur in the present day Bangladesh in 1838 on the holy banks, the shore of the Padma River. That same Padma River where Srila Narottam Das Thakur bathed and was touched by the waves of the Padma River with ecstatic love of Godhead that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself has had deposited. Mahaprabhu had deposited love of Godhead into the Padma River and said that when my Naru, my Narottam will come, then you please give love of Godhead to him. When he comes to bathe here, you touch his body with the waves of love of Godhead. So that Padma River, which is the holy birthplace of Narottam Das Thakur, or pastime place we can see, on the shore of that in Faridpur in the present day Bangladesh, Srila Gorkishor Das Babaji Maharaj appeared roughly about 100 and 90 or maybe 200 years ago, uh, he appeared and uh, he appeared in not a Brahminical uh, family by birth, he appeared in a Vaishya family like Krishna, <laughs> he appeared in a Gopa Vamsa, a Vaishya caste um, and right in his childhood during as, as it was a custom during that time, child marriage was a custom. So right in his boyhood between the age of 6 and 11, um, his parents arranged for his marriage and he did get married. He was too young <laughs> to understand what is happening. So he got married and Srila Gorkishor Das Babaji Maharaj remained in family life for 29 years and he worked as a grain broker. He worked as a grain broker, as a trader of grain for 29 years. So up to the mid or late 30s, he was married. He lived in his Grihastha life. But however, soon after his wife left her body due to a, a pandemic that existed at that time, uh, immediately after her death and after her departure, Srila Gorkishor Das Babaji Maharaj, he did not have any children or any successor after that. So he left and sold off all his business, left everything, and he approached Srila Bhagavad Das Babaji Maharaj for Babaji Vesh. Srila Bhagavad Das Babaji Maharaj was a Diksha disciple of Srila Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj. So Srila Gorkishor Das Babaji Maharaj takes Babaji Vesh, the Vesh, the, cl the cloth of a Paramahamsa great Vaishnava uh, from Srila Bhagavad Das Babaji Maharaj. And Srila Bhagavad Das Babaji Maharaj was a disciple of Srila Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj. So therefore many times we can find that Srila Gorkishor Das Babaji Maharaj is referred to as the grand disciple 
and in some places even the direct disciple of Srila Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj because he associated very closely with Srila Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj. Srila Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj lived for more than 140 years and therefore his life overlapped with the lifespan of Srila Jagannath Das, uh, Srila Gorkishor Das Babaji Maharaj and even Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur and Prabhupada Saraswati Thakur. They were all on the planet at the same time. There are instances of Srila Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj, the Gurudev of Bhaktivinoda Thakur, meeting with the young Bimal Prasad, Srila Prabhupada Saraswati Thakur. And it was Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj who instructed Prabhupada Saraswati Thakur to calculate the Gauri Vaishnav calendar for 300 years. And Prabhupada Saraswati Thakur, the genius that he was with all his physics and mathematics and astrology and astronomy knowledge put together, of course, uh, his empowerment from the super soul. He put together the Panchang, the calendar for 300 years. So in this way, Shila, this was the era to put in perspective uh, when Srila Gorkishor Das Babaji Maharaj existed and manifested his pastimes. So after he took Diksha from Bhagavad Das Babaji Maharaj and associated with him and, and heard Harikatha from him and Bhaktivinoda Thakur and Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj, etc. Eventually in his life, we find that he was he was exemplifying unparalleled renunciation right from the time he met Srila Bhagavad Das Babaji Maharaj. He traveled from village to village in Vrindavan and performed Krishna Bhakti for 32 years in Sri Vrindavan Dham. So from his mid-30s or his late 30s, another 32 years, he lived in Sri Vrindavan Dham and just performed the bhajan running from one forest to another. It is described that sometimes he would have his clothes on and sometimes crying and weeping, searching for Radha and Krishna. He would not even know that his clothes are off. So it is not that he was clumsy and he was uh, careless. That's not how it is. The heart and the mind, the consciousness was completely in the spiritual world. Pure Vaishnavas, uh, they have their eyes in the spiritual world and feet in the material world. And sometimes they have their eyes and feet in the spiritual world and only the hand in the material world, like Srila Prabhupada. His feet were always in the spiritual world. His eyes were always in the spiritual world. But only the hands were there in the material world to pull all of us up. And sometimes you have some Acharyas who are not coming from there, but going from here to there. So they may have one feet here or one foot here and one foot in the spiritual world and the eye, the eyes in the spiritual world progressing taking everyone along. And sometimes you have Acharyas who have both their feet in the material world, but eyes in the spiritual world. This is most important. The eyes must not be in the material world. If the eyes are looking at things in the material world, then um, that is not first class. So Srila Gorkishor Das Babaji Maharaj, his eyes, his heart, his mind, his senses, his body, his life air was all in the spiritual world, crying and weeping behind every tree. Kothaye go prema mai radhe radhe. Kanu Manamo Hini Radhe Radhe, Brindavana Vilasini Radhe Radhe, Ashta Sakhi Shiro Mani Radhe Radhe, Dekha Diye Pran Rakho Radhe Radhe, O Radharani, where are you? O best among the Sakhis, O Radharani, where are you? O daughter of Brishabhanu Maharaj, O Radharani, where are you? Dekha Diye Pran Rakho, please give darshan and protect my life. So Radharani asked, who is calling me? So Gaur Kishor Das Babaji Maharaj said, Tumar Kangal Tumai Dake, O Radharani, your beggar is calling out for your mercy. And in this way, crying and weeping and living in extreme detachment for 32 years, he lived in the forests of Brindavan with no one around him, just chanting and crying. And during this time, he would have association of like-minded, high-class Vaishnavas. Sometimes he would go to Jagannath Puri and meet with Sri Swarup Das Babaji Maharaj, who was a very exalted renunciant to that point. And sometimes he would go to Kuliagram and meet Chaitanya Das Babaji Maharaj, another great Vaishnav. So in this way, uh, Chaitanya Das Babaji Maharaj, Swarup Das Babaji Maharaj, Bhagwan Das Babaji Maharaj, and of course, Bhagavad Das Babaji Maharaj. So associating with like-minded Babajis, great Vaishnav Acharyas, who were all chanting 2 lakh, 3 lakh every day, 120 rounds, 150 rounds, 190 rounds, and living off simple madhukari, begging for pieces of roti, 
living with simple clothes. Srila Gorkishor Das Babaji Maharaj lived with extreme renunciation. Extreme renunciation. The dhoti that he wore was the cloth that used to be used to cover the corpse, the dead body on the banks of the Ganga in Navadvip or the banks of Yamuna in Vrindavan. So after the body, so they used to use to, to, to cover the body and that is the cloth that he would just dip in the Ganga and wear around, which means absolutely no possessions in this world. He would use earthen pots to, for his cooking, which were discarded by the Brajbasis. What they thought was not useful to them was discarded and thrown is what he would collect and keep and use. And what would he cook in that? He would beg whatever is available in, in the house of those who do bhajan. Lived very austere. And when people would come and ask him too many questions, Srila Gaur Kishore Das Babaji Maharaj would get bugged by this because he didn't want the association of materialistic people. He did not want the association of materialistic people. Sometimes he would go and sit in public toilets, latrines, and people would come and knock and say, aren't you troubled by the stink of this toilet? And Srila Gaur Kishore Das Babaji Maharaj said, oh, this is external consideration. The stink of the toilet troubles the nose, but the stink of the association of those who are duplicitous it troubles the consciousness, and that's a bigger stink. Associating with those who have Tilak and Kantimala, but they're not following proper rules, Srila Gorkishur Das Babaji Maharaj would say, associating with such people, that stink of their association, it troubles the consciousness. This only troubles the nose. <laughs> very, very unorthodox, very difficult to understand. Nishkin Chanasya Bhagavad Bhajanon Mukhasya Param Param Jigamishor Bhavasagarasya Sandarshanam Vishainam Athayoshitanam Ha Hanta Hanta Vishana Vishabhakshana Topya Sadhu. Sriman Mahaprabhu quoted this verse to say that if anyone wants to cross the ocean of material existence, Nishkinchanasya Bhagavad Bhajana Unmukhasya. If somebody <clears throat> wants to do bhajan, Krishna Bhakti, and wants to live a very detached life in this world and desires param param jigamishor bhavasagarasya and desires to cross the ocean of repeated birth and death, then they must be aware of two uh, wrongdoings that they have to keep away from. Then what is that? Sandarshanam vishayinam athayoshitanam. They should not see and associate with uh, the opposite gender very closely and should not associate with materialist, materialistic minded people. Asat sanga tyagai vaishnavachar Stri Sangi, Ek Asadhu, Krishna Abhakta Ar. One should not associate with the opposite sex. One should not associate with those who are not devotees. And one should not associate with those who are acting like devotees but are duplicitous. These are three associations to keep away. Mahaprabhu said it is better. Uh, now, please don't uh, take this literally. It's to make a point. Mahaprabhu said it is better to drink poison than to associate with such people. Why? Because when we drink poison, the soul is separated from the body. But when you associate with these people, the soul is separated from the super soul, which is a bigger separation. <laughs> when we associated, associate with materialistic people who want to perform bhakti with duplicity in their heart, then what happens? The soul goes far away from the super soul. But by poison, the soul only goes away from the body. Please note, it's a disclaimer. This is not what the intention of the discussion is. It is only to mention that if drinking poison is abominable, yes, it is, then more abominable than that is wrong association. This is the point. So Srila Gorkishor Das Babaji Maharaj, he, he had these teachings that he followed. And therefore, he was certainly very famous, one of the greatest Vaishnavas in Vrindavan. Um, he was... Even if you see in the in the Pranam Mantra, we say Namaha Gaura Kishoraya. I bow down to Gaura Kishore Das Babaji Maharaj. Sakshad Vairagya Murti ne. He is the Sakshad Vairagya Murti. He is the direct manifestation of renunciation. The word Vairagya in Sanskrit is very important. Very interesting word. So the word Vairagya generally is translated as detachment. But detachment means alternative attachment. When there is attachment in something, then it's automatically detachment from something else. 
विषया विवर्तंत निराहार से देहिं रसोवर्जम रसोप्य से परम दृष्ट निवर्तन सो वैराग्यम वॉट डज इट मीन वै मीन विदउट दैट प्लेस वेर देर इज एबसेंस वै एंड राग मीन अटैचमेंट सो इट इज ट्रांसलेटेड एस वैराग्य मीन नो अटैचमेंट टू दिस वर्ल्ड और द वर्ड वै कुड मीन विशेष स्पेशल and raga means attachment when there is special attachment to krishna then there is complete detachment from this world so vai rag vairagyam vai means no and rag means attachment to this world so there is no attachment to this world which is detachment but how is that obtained vai vishesha special rag attachment by special attachment to krishna then the attachment of this world ceases to exist is taken away So Shri La Gaur Kishor Das Baba Ji Maharaj is called Sakshat Bhairagya Murti. Ne. He is the direct manifestation, the Murti Swarup of detachment and very special attachment to Krishna. Detachment from this world and very special attachment to Krishna. Vipra Lambara Sambodhe Padam Bhojayate Namaha. To he who is the ocean of feeling this Vipra Lambara sa, always feeling separation from Krishna. He never encouraged someone saying, "Oh, I saw Krishna in my dream." krishna gave me darshan krishna spoke like this to me i heard the flute sound of krishna he never encouraged revelations like this he himself although he saw the pastimes of radha and krishna he would search oh where is radharani where is krishna behind this kunj or behind this tree or in this forest or in this village where are you oh radharani oh krishna dekha diye pran rakho tumar kangal tumhe daake please give darshan and save my life your beggar is calling out to you so in this way sakshat vairagya murti ye vipralambara sambodhe he who is the ocean of oh, vipralambara sa the mellow of separation padam bhojayate namah unto his lotus feet we bow down te namah so we mean what we say at least we should try to know the meaning and go deeper in in his glories so he was the bhajananandi shiromani of brindavan he was the crown jewel of all those who did bhajan never secretly personally privately endeavored even a drop for any gratification it's not that he was preaching something and practicing something else not like that he was completely completely in line his bhav was completely in line with what he was preaching no attachment to women no attachment to money no attachment to name fame following no attachment to any possessions complete detachment only one thing krishna and nothing else no duplicity no duplicity and because of this uh, he won the hearts of everyone he was always independent he never depended on anyone no support from anyone he fulfilled all his necessities practically by himself his only possessions in this world by were the tulsi mala that he wore around the neck and the tulsi mala that he had to chant that's all and sometimes in his ecstatic transcendental separation even the neck beads used to be missing and no mala also for chanting he would just have a cloth which he would make into 108 beads and he would just chant with no clothes on his body not even aware of where he is because he's crying and calling out to krishna <laughs> like shukadev goswami in the shrimad bhagavatam like jada bharat in the fifth canto like the avanti brahmana the avadut in the 11th canto so many avaduts have been given like nityananda prabhu in chaitanya charitamrit or chaitanya leela these are all transcendental personalities who can't be put in a box of society vamshidas baba ji maharaj was another one with long hair <laughs> with long nails sometimes not bathing for weeks together why so that his effulgence doesn't come out <laughs> because when his effulgence comes out people will understand he's a great soul and they will come and ask him questions and trouble him so sometimes on purpose he would have stink coming from his body so that nobody comes close to him <laughs> very different but these are things we should not imitate if there is stink coming from the body we better go and bathe <laughs> we are not expected to be avadutes also shila gor kishor das baba ji maharaj uh, he would just have two books with him 
Prarthana and Prem Bhakti Chandrika. These were the two books written by Srila Narottam Das Thakur. Only two books he had. Prarthana and Prem Bhakti Chandrika. And both of them in Bengali. So if someone came and asked, please give us some advice how to develop love of Godhead. So he would say, read Prarthana and Prem Bhakti Chandrika and practice it in your life. This is all that you have to do. This is all that you have to do. <laughs> Prem Bhakti Chandrika. Actually, there was a one. There was one very great soul um, in Vrindavan. This was about uh, 250, 300 years ago. And once a very big businessman came to him, came to this sadhu and said, "Oh sadhu, sadhuji, how can we? How can I develop love of Godhead?" So the sadhu Mahatma said, "Oh, you want to develop love of Godhead? You want to develop prema bhakti? Then you have to read prema bhakti chandrika." By Srila Narottam Das Thakur. And this businessman took it so much to heart, he got Prem Bhakti Chandrika and he read Prem Bhakti Chandrika repeatedly all his life. And within about 10 years, he left everything and he became a renunciant. He became a renunciant. And then practically it so happened that um, he came to Vrindavan and there was a very big philosophical uh, meeting of big, big scholars. And this person who was intoxicated with love of Godhead <laughs> by reading and following Prem Bhakti Chandrika, what happened was he came outside that meeting. So the security guard stopped him. said, where are you going? He said, no, I want to go and sit inside and hear what is happening. He said, no, no, it is not for beggars like you. Go away. The security did not realize who he was. So immediately the head of that sabha, he heard there's something going on. So he came out and he looked at this person and he said, yes, how can we serve you? He said, I just want to sit and hear what is happening. He said, they told the security, okay, you let him in. So he came and sat on the floor on the back and all the scholars were debating and talking something. And there was a question that nobody could answer. And at that point, this uh, person who was sitting at the back, just chanting the holy name, this Sabhapati asked him that, well, Everybody has spoken, but this person has not spoken anything. Um, do you want to say something? So that person said, well, I don't know anything. What can I say? All of you are scholars. What can I speak? He said, no, no, please speak something. We are all debating about this question. Do you have anything to say? So this man, he started giving his purport. And the jaws dropped of all the scholars. And they were all thinking, wait a minute. This person seems to be like a beggar of the street that the security tried to stop. <laughs> he's chanting and sitting like a simple person. How is it that he's able to answer all this? And after answering all of this, he said, oh, I have not realized any of this. I'm just simply speaking. But they could see as he was speaking, tears rolling from his eyes and hair standing on end and body trembling with horripilation and throat choked with love of Godhead. So all the scholars offered obeisances. And they said, can you tell us something about your life? And he said, well, I was like landlord. I was a businessman with a lot of money. And I went to one sadhu and I said, I have only one desire. And that is to develop Prema Bhakti. And he told me, if you want to develop Prema Bhakti, then the only book you have to read is Prema Bhakti Chandrika or Srila Narottam Das Thakur. And it's been a few years. Every single day in my life, I'm only reading Prema Bhakti Chandrika. And whatever I have spoken is the mercy of Srila Narottam Das Thakur. <laughs> So I was reminded of this story now, although it was a little a sidetrack, but it's just to make this point that how Srila Gorkishor Das Babaji Maharaj had complete faith in Prarthana and Sri Prem Bhakti Chandrika, the two books of Srila Narottam Das Thakur. If we see the Sri Guru Charana Padma Kevala Bhakati Sadma that we sing every day comes from these books of Srila Narottam Das Thakur. Radha Krishna Prana Mur Jugala Kishore comes from Prarthana. So all these songs that we sing, they come from these books. And Srila Prabhupada, even Gaurangir Dutipada Jardhana Sampada Dhana Mora Nityananda Pati Mora Gaura Chandra, all these songs come from these books. And Srila Prabhupada has also said, if we want to get to the essence of the Vedas, then we have to study the songs of Bhaktivinoda Thakur and the songs of Srila Narottam Das Thakur, like Prarthana and Prem Bhakti Chandrika. And Prabhupada has even given purports to these songs 
in the song book. So our Gorkishor Das Babaji Maharaj, he had only these two books <laughs> that he would advise everyone to read. And um, whenever anybody saw Srila Gorkishor Das Babaji Maharaj, they would re- get reminded of the renunciation of Srila Raghunath Das Goswami. Then it is described at around uh, in in around um, 1898. This is when Srila Gorkishor Das Babaji Maharaj was about 60 years old. That's when in uh, Godrum Dweep, in Navadweep, our Bhaktivinoda Thakur Mahashay had built the Swananda Sukhada Kunj, his place of residence. And Srila Gorkishor Das Babaji Maharaj came there. He, of course, moved to Navadweep Dham from Vrindavan and he came there. And that was the place where Prabhupada Saraswati Thakur, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Prabhupada, first met, met his Gurudev in uh, 1898. That was the first meeting. And on that day, Srila Gorki Shordas Babaji Maharaj, who, who came there singing the glories of Radharani, what he did, he impressed the heart of Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Prabhupada. Srila Prabhupada Saraswati Thakur saw that the tongue of Srila Gorki Shordas Babaji Maharaj was moving like a machine, chanting the holy name constantly, constantly chanting. And that day, Srila Gorki Shordas Babaji Maharaj, he um, put tilak. <laughs> to Prabhupada Saraswati Thakur. And he also gave him stamp on the body of the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. <laughs> and also gave him some pieces of rope to make into knots and to chant. And he also gave him some paraphernalia for worship. So he had received all this from his Gurudev, Bhagavad Das Babaji Maharaj, and he gave it to Srila Gorki uh, to Srila Prabhupada Saraswati Thakur, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Prabhupada. Prabhupada Saraswati Thakur. For two years, he observed his Gurudev. From 1898, two years, 1900. Two years he observed. And he saw for two years, Srila Gorki Shordas Babaji Maharaj was constantly chanting. Two years he saw his tongue and his lips were constantly moving. Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Prabhupada writes, If I would have seen my Gurudev perform bhajan for 23 hours, 59 minutes, 59 seconds, and keep one second for himself, I wouldn't have taken Diksha. (laughs) If I would have seen my Gurudev chant the holy name 23 hours, 59 minutes, and 59 seconds, and keep one second for himself, I wouldn't have taken Diksha from him. What it means is even one second, Srila Gorki Shardas Babaji Maharaj did not keep for himself. He was constantly chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, constantly chanting. And this is what impressed the heart of Prabhupada Saraswati Thakur. And then we know the famous story where he tried so many times and he asked Srila Gorki Shordas Babaji Maharaj that, can you initiate me? And Gorki Shordas Babaji Maharaj would say, oh, let me ask Mahaprabhu. <laughs> what an answer is that? <laughs> What kind of answer is that? Mahaprabhu left, <laughs> wound up his pastimes and went back to the spiritual world like 450 years ago. <laughs> and Gaur Kishor Das Babaji Maharaj told Prabhupada Saraswati Thakur, let me ask Mahaprabhu. And whatever Mahaprabhu tells me to do is what I will do. And this went on two, three, four times. And then Prabhupada Saraswati Thakur, he displayed his unparalleled dedication and surrender. He said, if you don't, Give me Diksha, then I am jumping into the Ganga and giving my life, giving up my life. And Srila Gorki Shordas Babaji Maharaj was very impressed. And then what did he do? He took some dust from his lotus feet and sprinkled on the head of Srila Prabhupada Saraswati Thakur. Gorki Shordas Babaji Maharaj, very uncharacteristic. He took dust from his own lotus feet and offered it on the head of his disciple, accepting him as his disciple. And as soon as that happened, Prabhupada Saraswati Thakur writes, I was so proud of my scholarship. I was so proud of my ability and intelligence and knowledge. But as soon as the dust, the particles of dust from the lotus feet of my Guru Pada Padma, my spiritual master touched my head, all my illusory coverings and attachments of this world were shattered to pieces at that point. (sighs) <laughs> Very great uh, display of nishta that Prabhupada Saraswati Thakur displayed. Gorkishor Das Babaji Maharaj would come and associate with Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur 
at Swananda Sukhada Kunj in Godhrum. And from three o'clock in the afternoon to five o'clock in the afternoon, they just discuss Bhagavatam, two hours every afternoon. And sometimes he would be so absorbed that they would discuss all night, all night, just discussing Srimad Bhagavatam. Srila Gorkishor Das Babaji Maharaj, because of his lifestyle that he led, um, very, very transcendental to what we see, he would um, do things that we can't understand. One time he was just eating the, the mud on the banks of Radha Kund with both his hands. Somebody asked him, what happened? Why are you doing this? Srila Gorkishor Das Babaji Maharaj said, this tongue wanted to eat something which was not offered to Krishna. This tongue wanted to eat something which was not offered to Krishna. So therefore I'm trying to punish this tongue. I'm trying to punish this tongue by eating the dust on the banks of Radha Kund. He would just take mud and try eating it. He said, my tongue wants to eat something that is not offered to Krishna. So I must punish my tongue. I must punish my tongue. Great Vaishnava Acharyas are like this. They don't get punished by the senses. They punish the senses. Very interesting. It's almost like a Chaitanya Charan Prabhu <laughs> play of words. Great Acharyas don't get punished by the senses. They actually punish the senses. There was actually another great Vaishnava. <laughs> who lived at Govind Kund at Govardhan. His name was Siddha Manohar Das Babaji Maharaj. Very great Vaishnava Acharya. He was so detached that he lived in the cave. Now, we're not talking about Gorkishwar Das Babaji Maharaj. We're talking about Siddha Manohar Das Babaji Maharaj, another great Vaishnava Acharya who lived about 120, 150 years ago in Vrindavan, at, uh, at, uh, in a cave at Govind Kund at Govardhan. So why we are mentioning that is because he also was like this. He would sit in that cave and chant 17 hours a day. <laughs> Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. He would sit in the cave and just chant all day, every day. And after about 7 o'clock or 8 o'clock at night, he would come out. When there's nobody around, he would come out. And he would wait for about five minutes. Is there some prasadam arrangement for me today? Has Radharani sent something, someone, anyone, anywhere? We plan. What am I going to eat the next day for breakfast, the next day for lunch, the next day for dinner? And what am I going to do the day after tomorrow to break the fast of Ekadashi? That planning also goes on. Tomorrow is Ekadashi, so I can't eat this. But day after tomorrow, mom, please make pizza. I want to break Ekadashi Vrat with pizza or burger. So we make plans about the breakfast day after tomorrow. Talking about myself. Uh, that's how I used to be. So Srila Siddha Manohar Das Babaji Maharaj was not like that. Forget about making plans for day after tomorrow breakfast. He would not even make plans for next day breakfast. Not even that. He wouldn't even make plan for today's breakfast, today's lunch or today's dinner. Like at seven o'clock in the evening, why he would do that? Because if he comes out during the day, people will say, oh, Babaji has come. Please let's pamper him. Let's give him all the food. Let's give him all the vegetables. Let's give him all the fruits. He didn't want that. He wanted to see how much love Radharani and Sri Krishna have for me. So I will come out at a time when there's nobody around. <laughs> and if they want to give me something, let them come and give me. So Siddha Manohar Das Babaji Maharaj was like this. 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock in the evening after chanting 17 hours a day, he would come out. He would come out. And then he would look around for about 5 to 6 minutes. It doesn't, it's almost like Krishna is the servant and he, the Babaji Maharaj is the master. Like Krishna has to come and serve his master. So he would come and see for about 5 to 6 minutes. If, he, if they have sent something, then I will eat. Otherwise, I will fast. And invariably, something or the other will come. I will not send it. It's Krishna doesn't say, I will arrange it. He doesn't say, Vahami, I will arrange. No, Vahami Aham, I will personally come and give. <laughs> so, Siddha Manohar Das Babaji was like that. And then he would again go into his cave and shut chanting. He would not have any cloth on the top and just like a dhoti underneath and nothing on the top. So one time in the middle of the winter night, 
he was almost trembling out of cold but still he wanted to he, he his body wanted little more sleep and he would wake up at 12 o'clock midnight to sit and chant japa so now what's happening is it's time to oh, <laughs> it's kind of funny you know like <laughs> completely unrelatable the time that we go off to sleep is the time he would wake up to sit and chant so 12 o'clock used to be his wake up time to chant so what used to happen is one night as he was sleeping he felt like sleeping little more because it was cold and you know cold nights it's little more tempting to sleep longer so he wanted to sleep little longer and as soon as the clock ticked 12 devotees heard a big splash into govind kun <laughs> devotees came out so what happened what fell and they saw siddh manohar das baba ji maharaj in ice cold govind kund water in the middle of a winter night at govardhan they said baba ji maharaj what are you doing the water is so cold he came out and he said this body was asking for half an hour sleep time to punish time to punish the body the body was asking for more sleep so i thought if i jump into the ice cold water of govind kund then this is the punishment i can give the body this is how siddh manohar das baba ji maharaj lived siddh manohar das baba ji maharaj lived like this at govardhan so why we are mentioning it shila gor kishor das baba ji maharaj he would eat mud to punish his tongue so from that we drew parallel to how siddh manohar das baba ji maharaj would punish his body and for us we have hot water running down the tap hot water at the bath tub and still waking up and sitting and chanting is so troublesome this is durdaivam idrishami ha janina anuraga this is the sad state of reality shila prabhupad he would encourage cold water bath in the morning um many advantages to that first advantage is we will save a lot of water <laughs> because if it is hot water we feel like being there like buffaloes for a long time but if it's ice cold water not ice cold but at least cold water then we go in and we come out very quickly there's a lot of we can save a lot of water the second advantage is you can see whenever there's hot water bath the body feels or the mind feels or we in general we feel sleepy after a hot water bath because what happens is that the body becomes little relaxed and we feel like sleeping so many times a hot water bath a warm water bath is okay just before sleeping at night because it induces sleep but early in the morning when there is cold water bath then we will see that when we come out we can't sleep because the body is in a shake in a state of shock <laughs> what did you, what did you just do with me <laughs> what did you do you jumped into cold water <laughs> and that's one thing that we can never get habituated to like you can chant and get habituated to chanting 16 rounds you can eat two meals a day get habituated to that you can exercise one hour a day get habituated to that but taking cold water bath even after 20 years we never get habituated because every morning it's a fresh experience <laughs> it's getting into ice cold water and the body is like what are you doing and in that stage of shock is 2 hours of chanting you can't sleep so prabhupad said if someone takes cold water bath chants 16 rounds follows four regulative principles reduces one's sleep and eating five things if they do that for 12 years whatever they speak will come out correct will come out perfect this is found in what's the difficulty by shruti kirti prabhu he mentions this past time where prabhu pad said if you wake up in the morning chant 16 rounds take a cold water bath uh, follow four regulative principles reduce your eating and reduce your sleep for 12 years whatever you speak will come out perfect so shila gor kishor das baba ji maharaj he lost his vision by 1908 1908 because of his lifestyle that he led he became blind but it so happened one fine morning at 2 o'clock prabhupad saraswati thakur find shila gor kishor das baba ji maharaj outside his mat in navadvi and he asked him baba ji maharaj guru maharaj how did you come here you can't even see how did you come here you can and it's not a path that we can walk you have to take the boat cross over the river walk through all the steep slopes and the forests 
How did you reach here? There are no pakka roads. Shila Gaur Kishor Das Babaji Mara chuckled and he said, Oh, that boy, he helped me. <laughs> that boy. Who is that boy at two o'clock in the morning who will hold a hand of a 75 year old, mm. externally blind Gaur Kishor Das Babaji Maharaj and take him through the forests and put him on a boat and cross him over a river? Prabhupada Saraswati Thakur was really amazed. He said, Which boy? Gaur Kishor Das Babaji said, Someone. <laughs> Someone. Some boy. I think we know who that boy, that some boy is. Some boy with a peacock feather on his head. You know, that's some boy with a threefold bending form. That's some boy who plays a flute on the lower lip. That's some boy who has a lotus petal like I. That's some boy who captivates and maddens the hearts of the gopis and the gopas. That Sri Krishna Sham Sundar. He held the hand of Srila Gaur Kishore Das Babaji Maharaj and got him across. This is so, even when he was externally not able to see uh, internally, uh, Krishna helped him. And of course, Bhaktivinoda Thakur Mahashai, he was, um, he was very disturbed with the fact that Srila Gaur Kishore Das Babaji Maharaj had uh, lost his vision. So Bhaktivinoda Thakur Mahashai, he said, uh, Babaji Maharaj, why don't you go to Calcutta? And in Calcutta, there are medicines. My Bimal Prasad, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Prabhupada will help you. He will serve you and take care of you and give you medicines in Calcutta. And guess what Srila Gaurkishwar Das Babaji Maharaj would have said? Yes, good plan. Let's go to Calcutta and get medicines. No, he didn't say that. He started running towards the river, the sacred river, Saraswati at that point. And Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur is running behind him. Where are you going? He said, I am going. Give up your life. Why? Srila Gorkishwar Das Babaji Maharaj said, Before I think of even taking service some, from anyone, especially someone as glorious as yourself, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, uh, son of Bhakti Vinod Thakur, before I even give that thought of taking service from someone as glorious as you, better I jump into the water and give up my life. Because my blindness is what is causing trouble to your heart. So better than taking service from anyone, I give up my life. And he jumped into the water. And Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati Thakur behind him and villagers behind him and they are trying to get him out. And for 45 days, he was not to be seen. Bhakti Vinod Thakur was very uh, shocked. What happened to Babaji Maharaj? Then Babaji Maharaj was safe. He came out after 45 days, after the hiding, he came out. And the first sentence he said, oh, it's better to die than to depend on anyone. This was how detached he was. We, for small, small things, we depend on others. And even worse, we think, yes, you will get, you will make advancement by serving me. But Gorkishor Das Babaji Maharaj was not like that. He would call his disciple, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, as Amar Prabhu, my master. Amar Prabhu. And to take service from his own disciple was worse than death for him. Srila Gorkishwar Das Babaji Maharaj was very detached. Every Ekadashi he did Nirjal. He didn't take a drop of water on Ekadashis. He fasted completely. And in this way, he lived all his life with so many beautiful lessons that we can learn. There are many aspects to his life the aspect of how he didn't like if people came up with ecstatic symptoms, like if someone comes up with crying and weeping and falling on the floor, Srila Gorkishor Das Babaji Maharaj would say, Koi pakdo inko bahar you know, just take this person. You know, he seems a total badmash. Put him out. Bahar karo inko. So if someone is trying to act, one person came, you know, he was faltering and the other person was holding him and bringing him. And the other person who was holding him was saying, look, I'm holding him because his body is erupting in ecstasy. He can't even walk. I'm holding him and bringing him. And he's a very great pundit, very great scholar. Oh, he knows Sanskrit and he's Shastratnya and he can explain Bhagavatam. He's a very great devotee. 
And just by his association, I'm getting so much inspiration. Gaur Kishore Das Babaji Maharaj was listening and tolerating all this. <laughs> From his standpoint, he has to listen to all this. And this person said, oh, this person is so advanced. He was just glorifying the other one and said, you know, he's so great. And then he told Gaur Kishore Das Babaji Maharaj, is there some advice for me? Gaur Kishore Das Babaji Maharaj said, give up the association of this nonsense. This imitator, someone who is a hypocrite, trying to act as if he has ecstatic symptoms. So the person said, no, no, he's not acting. He really has. Like Mahaprabhu has, he also has. Srila Gaur Das Babaji Maharaj said, the glory of a person is in wearing clothes, not revealing the body. The glory of the person is in wearing clothes, not revealing the body. So similarly, the glory of a person is in hiding the symptoms, not revealing them. They couldn't stand this level of uncompromising truth and they just left the place. So in this way, there are many beautiful stories of Srila Gorki Shordas Babaji Maharaj's disgust towards uh, external display of ecstatic symptoms. Many pastimes of Gorki Shordas Babaji Maharaj talking against the association of the opposite sex. Many pastimes of Srila Gorki Shordas Babaji Maharaj showing how someone who is speaking Bhagavatam, who is teaching, who is uh, giving Harikatha, he should not become a professional reciter and charge money for it. Like I will do seven days on this or I will speak 25 days on that and now all of you have to give money. If somebody does that, then that is not correct. So Gorkishore Das Babaji Maharaj is dead against all of these, all of these practices. But in today's discussion, our main focus was how detached he was, how humble, how attached to Krishna. He would chant 128 rounds of Hare Krishna Mahamantra Japa every single day, minimum. 128, not 1 plus 2 plus 8, 11 rounds. <laughs> 128 rounds every single day. And Srila Gorkishore Das Babaji Maharaj also had a deity. What deity? He had a big stone. And on the stone, he had the impression of Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Ram Ram, Ram Hare Hare. So Akshara were written and he would do Abhishek to that stone, which had the impression of the holy name to teach all the worlds that it is actually the holy name, which is our deity. So in this way, that Gorkishore Das Babaji Maharaj who exemplified greatest renunciation from this world, greatest attachment to Brindavan Dham, greatest attachment to chanting the holy name, an uncompromising, straightforward revealer of transcendental truth. That great Vaishnava who was Paramahamsa Churamani, who was Bhajananande Shiromani, who was the best among the transcendentalists. Um, tomorrow being his tithi, we offer our obeisances to Babaji Maharaj and we pray that May we overcome our duplicity and our hypocrisy and develop little attachment to the holy names like he has done. Srila Gorkishore Das Babaji Maharaj ki jai, Srila Prabhupada Saraswati Thakur ki jai, Srila Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada ki jai, Ananta Koti Gaur Bhaktavrind ki jai, Nitai Gaur Premanande Hari Hari Go. Sorry, I, I think I overspoke, so please forgive me for going over time. Thank you, Amrinda Prabhu. Um, can we take some questions, Prabhu? Or, uh, sure. sure. So, devotees, uh, if you have any questions, if you can kindly raise your hand so then I can unmute yourself. I, I, I will help you unmute. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Hare Krishna Mataji. I don't know Prabhuji. Bishma Panchak Jo Kalsi start on a valley, a Kadashi come fast curte. To second a grain snail and a Kyoki Panchak retina. To fast case a breaker, pardon time a fast breaker tena. So the question is um, how do we break our fast on Dwadashi? because the fast goes on for five days for Bhishma Panchak. So it depends 
सो uh, माता so, जी आप उत्तर हिंदी में चाहेंगी कि इंग्लिश में चाहेंगी इंग्लिश इंग्लिश ओके इंग्लिश इज ओके ओके सो देयर आर डिफरेंट काइंड्स ऑफ फास्ट फॉर भीष्म पंचक द मोस्ट कॉमन वन दैट वी सी इज ईटिंग थ्री मील्स अ डे फॉर फाइव डेज सो दैट इज व्हाट वी डू but then if you want to fast little more than two meals a day for five days even more one meal a day for five days there are different levels and also what we eat we can have um, khichdi prasadam for four days or just ekadashi prasadam for five days very austere would be fruits for five days these are i am just i, I am not a, a, a family physician advising all this i am just a pharmacist so i am just putting different uh, medicines out and you can take whatever you like so now let's say one is doing nirjal vrat on ekadashi then just by drinking water on paran time on dwadashi the fast is broken and then you can continue your fast let's say you fast uh, with uh, fruits on ekadashi then if you have uh, ekadashi khichdi prasadam on dwadashi paran then that breaks the ekadashi and keeps your panchak going mata ji theek hai thank you prabhu ji thank you so much hare krishna hare krishna hare krishna is they got come to you mother you are on mute can you hear me now prabhu ji yes mother ji we can okay dandar okay. pranam prabhu ji jai shila prabhupad thank you so much for such a wonderful class we haven't heard many of um, you know baba ji's uh, past time thank you so much why a very um, simple question or a dumb question um, baba ji was living in vrindavan right and uh, did i hear it right that he came to see bhakti siddhanta saraswati tagore in navadweep yes he did move to navadweep after vrindavan oh, okay yes he did move to navadweep because gorkishor das baba ji maharaj and jagannath das baba ji maharaj both they after spending about 30 years gorkishor das baba ji maharaj spent 32 years in vrindavan jagannath das baba ji maharaj spent 70 years in vrindavan 70 and after that he felt nahi kaam nahi ho raha i have to take shelter of gaur bhumi <laughs> i have to take shelter of mahaprabhu's birthplace and both shila gorkishor das baba ji maharaj and shila jagannath das baba ji maharaj both moved from um vraj mandal to gaur mandal for speeding their process of elevation so of course so many details but um but that's the that's the essence thank you does that make sense yes yes hari krishna thank you thank you prabhu ji my question was yes mata ji my question was why do 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 we don't have pralad maharaj as superior why don't we have pralad maharaj as our superior no disappearance oh why we don't have pralad maharaj disappearance day a uh, very good question very good question i really don't have an answer for that <laughs> we we'll have to probably talk to the gbc to add a few more disappearance day you know we have to say that you know we like to fast till noon there are some days on the calendar that are still open so you can fill that up with some few more disappearance day and we would like to fast till noon <laughs> but very good question i really don't know but but i i hope your question is not heard and incorporated into the vaishnav calendar then we'll have like disappearance day of gajendra and we'll have disappearance day of hanuman ji and dhruv maharaj pilad maharaj and then it's like all our pizza and pasta plans go for a toss Anyway, all glories to Prahlad Maharaj. <laughs> Thank you for that question. Thank you. How old are you? Five. Five years old. Oh, that's why you asked about the five-year-old Prahlad. Nice. Good. <laughs> Take it. Next. Rajaman, come here. Yes, Rudi. 
हरे कृष्णा प्रभु जी दंडवत प्रणाम थैंक यू फॉर गिविंग सच ए नाइस लेक्चर ट्रांसडेंटल लेक्चर फॉर सच अ ट्रांसडेंटल सोल गोल किशोर दास बाबा जी महाराज प्रभु जी माई क्वेश्चन इज लाइक मीन्स द इंस्ट्रक्शन विच लाइक भक्ति से वट इंस्ट्रक्शन डिड गोल किशोर दास बाबा जी गेव टू भक्ति सिद्धांत सरस्वती ठाकुर जी लाइक भक्ति सिद्धांत सरस्वती ठाकुर जी गेव टू उशील प्रभु पाद मीन्स वट इंस्ट्रक्शन गिवन बाई हिम टू हिज डिसाइपल भक्ति सिद्धांत सरस्वती ठाकुर द एसेंस ऑफ Uh, the instructions of shila gor kishor das baba ji maharaj given to bhakti siddhant saraswati thakur and to the whole world is krishna is not obtained by scholarship because shila bhakti siddhant saraswati thakur was a very big scholar he was given the title saraswati when he was only 7 or 8 years old hmm? he was an encyclopedia of astrology astronomy mathematics physics vedic education everything and shila gorkishor das baba ji maharaj could not even read and write his own name but the reason prabhupad saraswati thakur surrendered to him was because he wanted to be a disciple and he understood that he was way more advanced so shila gorkishor das baba ji maharaj central instruction to everyone is our life is not to run behind scholarship it's not to run behind uh, being very intelligent and academic it is to have a heart to surrender to krishna loving surrender loving devotional service this is point number 1 point number 2 is to keep away from pseudo vaishnavas pseudo vaishnavas means um when they uh, the action doesn't match um, the preaching hmm? and the third shila gorkishor das baba ji maharaj's instruction used to be we should really watch where we eat from where the food is coming from it could be prasad but who is cooking in what consciousness and where is the money coming in for that cooking very important so the, uh, this was the thing and the fourth and the final instruction of shila gor kishor das baba ji maharaj the essence used to be complete shelter of chanting the holy name one person came to shila gor kishor das baba ji maharaj and said that baba ji maharaj can you give us a very secret mantra by which we can re- we can unlock our eternal swarup which gopi in which kunj and what is our eternal service can you give us that secret mantra gor kishor das baba ji maharaj said sure come close show me your ear i want to say that mantra and when they put the ear gor kishor das baba ji maharaj said everyone ready hmm. yes prabhu ji hare krishna hare krishna 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 <laughs> hare 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 ram hare ram hare ram hare ram, 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 ram. so shila gor kishor das baba ji maharaj central instruction was the siddha pranali mantra or the secret mantra for unlocking our inner potential is hari krishna mantra so please this is the crux of all the instructions thank you prabhu ji uh, can i ask one more question actually since there are i would like to take i have no problem but since there are other hands it's uh, okay also, prabhu ji yeah, okay. maybe thank you very much prabhu ji thank you mantra ji hari krishna so niru mata ji Okay, Yuru Mata Ji, sir, there on the line. Yes, yeah, Prabhu Ji, Dandavat Pranam. Dandavat Pranam, Mata Ji, Hari Krishna. Uh, Prabhu Ji, my question is: Whatever little I do in bhakti, like chanting and reading, I do it mechanically, and I just want to get done with all these, and that also with materialistic desires. Is it okay to do so? I don't feel good about it. अकाम सर्व कामो वा मोक्ष काम उदारधी तीव्रेण भक्ति योगेन यजेत पुरुषम परम द सेकंड कैंटो भागवतम डिस्क्राइब्स इज इट ओके यस इट इज ओके टू अप्रोच कृष्ण विद मटेरियल डिजायर्स इज इट ओके यस इट इज ओके इज इट ओके टू चैंट मैकेनिकली इज इट ओके यस इट इज ओके बट देन द सेकंड क्वेश्चन इज इज इट आइडियल द आंसर इज नो द आइडियल आंसर इज नो बिकॉज़ व्हेन वी गो टू द किंग Uh, we should ask for jewels not for dead man ashes when the king is saying you can ask for anything that you like we should not ask for the ashes from the crematorium in the kingdom we should ask for jewels we should ask for the necklace of jewels around his neck that's what we should ask for and even better that we can ask for is the king himself ask for the king because with the king comes the kingdom so why go to krishna and ask for temporary material things which are compared to ashes from a crematorium 
আমা ভজে বিষয় মাগে এই বড় মূর্খ আমি বিজ্ঞ এই মূর্খে বিষয় কেন দিব নিজ চরণামৃত দিয়ে বিষয় ভুলাইব মহাপ্রভু চৈতন্য চরিতামৃত সম্বাদি হু ওয়ার্শিপ মাই লোটস ফিট এন্ড আস্ক ফর টেম্পোরারি থিংস ইস নট ভেরি ইন্টেলিজেন্ট দে ডোন্ট নো ওয়াট টু আস্ক ইটস লাইক ফর এক্সাম্পল উইল জাস্ট গিভ এন এক্সাম্পল হিয়ার let's say there's a there's a pit there's a well hmm? it's a dry well or a pit in the ground and we are fallen into it and somebody puts in a ladder with the ranks so what's the expectation so that we climb up the ranks and get out of the pit by climbing onto the ladder but imagine if the person takes those ranks and cuts them and makes a bonfire because it's very cold inside the pit it's very cold inside the pit so he cuts through the layers of that ladder and he's sitting inside the well good you could do that that's one way of using the ladder but is that the ideal way of losing the using the ladder no because the more you cut the rank the more it becomes impossible to get out of the pit but the best thing is to just jump on those ranks and get out so bhakti is like that ladder we are stuck in the pit of this world can we cut those ranks and use it as temporary bonfires to feel better the answer is yes you can is it ideal no the ideal is to just jump on those ranks and get out so the best thing to do is approach krishna and tell krishna krishna i have given my heart to the whole world lifetime after lifetime and all that i have got is thappad this is all that i have got people have cheated me and i have always been disappointed but now i want to give my complete heart to you i know you are the only person who will not ever trick me and with all our heart we should try and krishna is very kind so can we do it the answer is yes but should we ideally do it the answer is no prabhu ji then how to get rid of such mentality such tendency please guide by associating with those who are superior to us sajati aashaye snigdhe sadhu sangasvato vare shil rupa goswami pad has said all good qualities will come when we associate and hear from those who have them like the corona pandemic why are we told to keep distance in our temple we have 6 feet distance and between that 6 feet on the image they have drawn a cow they have said you know maintain a distance of a cow between two individuals <laughs> that's the uh, the distance the safety distance that we have to maintain why because if you get closer and if we are asymptomatic carriers and we sneeze what happens the other person takes on the infection right so if the corona virus can spread by the sneezing of the person why won't the corona virus of bhakti spread by the sneezing of their association just by being with a person if we can infected get infected materially then imagine what can happen to the consciousness just by associating with someone who is a very high class vaishnava so we should associate with high class vaishnavas not to teach them not to correct them but to learn from them to accept what they are saying and then if we do this even for as little as 6 months we will see how our consciousness will better association is the 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 ram barn the king of all solutions krishna bhakti janma mula hoye sadhu sang krishna prema janme te ho hoye punar mukhya ang kaviraj goswami has said sadhu sang is the king the solution of all problems at the sadhaka avastha and even when one becomes a pure vaishnav sadhu sang is the key to keep it going is that okay thank you very much prabhu ji hare krishna thank you so much mata ji brajaman prabhu ji can we take more questions from the seattle community if possible yes, because my my heart will be a little sad if after this service we have some devotees from the community who uh, are like krishna murli murli prabhu who are not offering their blessings because we didn't give them a chance for the question but now we'll give him a chance so that <laughs> he can bless me hare krishna prabhu dadas pranam prabhu thank you so much for your amazing uh, class um, the highlight for me was how you explained very beautifully the significance of guru tatva and elaborating on the guru ashtakam verse number 1 and the analogy of uh, uh, ramayan hanuman uh, so beautiful prabhu thank you very much as always uh, my question was prabhu you mentioned about uh, acharyas and that you said that 
you know they have their eyes on the spiritual world um, and then and you said did i hear that samacharyas have their feet also on the feet also on the spiritual world mm. but samacharyas have the feet on the material world mm. um, if you can please uh, elaborate a bit because i heard you said propad has both uh eyes and feet on the spiritual world but only hands are here to pick the pictures up mm. so i was little uh, <laughs> curious by that comment yeah, yeah. Right. actually we can have siddhas perfected beings in two ways one those who come from there into this world and those mm. who go to that world from this world right so you can have those who are nitya siddhas who are coming from there here to mm. serve and then go back and those who have sadhana siddha by lifetimes of krita punya punja of amassing pious credit over lifetimes itham uh, where is that word arjun sakha prabhu ji brahma sukha anubhutya itam satam brahma sukha anubhutya dasyam gatanam paradaivatena maya shritanam naradarakena sakham vijaharu krita punya punja krita punya punja thank you so much so it is described in the 10th canto of bhagavatam that great vaishnavas when they perform bhajan over lifetimes then they get qualified to go there so so acharyas we can say are of three types those who come from okay. there and those who are on their press process from going here and those who have almost reached there but they are still doing service here like that so you can say those coming from there have their eyes and feet there but only hands here they are pulling us in and those who are from this world they may have one feet here and one feet there with the eyes there pushing us in or those who have both their feet here they are beginning the process of ach- being acharyas both mm. feet here but the eyes must be there yes the primary yes. quality means they must have seen the supreme lord gnaninas tattva darshina tattva darshina mm. mm. like amazing cool <laughs> thank you so much for hari krishna hari krishna thank you so People. Now you will bless me, correct, Prabhu Ji? <laughs> you will bless me so that <laughs> you will bless me so that my eyes can someday. <laughs> I, I seek, uh, I seek your blessing, Arjun Sekhar Prabhu blessing, and all Vishnu blessings, correct? <laughs> Hare Krishna, Prabhu Ji. Hare Krishna, Murli Prabhu. Yes. How did uh, God Krishna Das Baba Ji Maharaj leave um, his body? very good question actually shila bhakti vinod thakur he left this world in 1914 and shila gorkishor das baba ji maharaj felt supreme separation from him and very soon after that in a year 1915 in separation from shila bhakti vinod thakur he left this world in navadweep so 1914 was bhakti vinod thakur and 1915 was shila gorkishor das baba ji maharaj was 106 years old 106 years ago Radhanand yes. I saw you raising your hand and then kind of dropping off Prabhu you have a question Radhanand Prabhu sorry yeah No Prabhu ji um, extend our uh, gratitude uh, it's always a pleasure and uh, you know pleasure of uh, heart to listen from amrinder prabhu thank you so much prabhu ji hari krishna thank you radhanand prabhu thank you hari krishna yes so i think we got all the seattle devotees so shall we continue sure maybe we can take two more okay we will wrap up yes prabhu ji bharat prabhu hmm Hare Krishna Prabhu ji dhanyavad pranam uh, it was very nice to hear your lecture prabhu so like uh, i would like to ask like uh, as the association you told so like if somebody is working in like corporate and in delhi they are busy with their work and means uh, i agree we go to mangala arti and then evening also we attend the arti but like still the mind is always busy in the office work coming from them mm. and at night also so how we can um, give more time to the our bhakti then since in mind the office work is a bit in hands and seeing the aarti means not mm-hmm. solely devoted to the devotion then yeah actually very practical and very important question that if we are working in the outside world and we are very busy um constantly with 
with deadlines and work pressure how do we remember krishna and how, most importantly how do we associate with devotees now this take this takes high level of sincerity to introspect and ask this question so i i um, really um, applaud for the sincerity in the question in the first place uh, the second thing is we have to make sure that the work that we pick is something that is more conducive for krishna consciousness if teaching is more conducive business is more conducive uh living as a medical doctor a professional of a doctor is more prof- uh, more conducive or in the it industry whatever is uh, economically more conducive as far as skill set that we have more conducive something that we think that we can invest time without it being too much of a pressure in our life not too unnatural for us we should do that let's say if teaching comes naturally one should try to be a teacher and uh, live that kind of a life because it's very conducive if that kind of a person tries to get into business and spends too much time and it's not working out he's not making money and he's not able to succeed materially and krishna consciousness goes for a toss and it's complete chaos complete frustration so point number 1 one, one has to pick our profile according to what we like to do what we are gifted in doing what brings in the money and what lets us Uh, contribute to society that's point number 1 now after that has been picked we have to make sure that um if monday to friday is devoted for work saturday and sunday we should have definitely 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 have a way out by which we can associate with the devotees and associate not just go and hang out and talk about corona and and cricket and and uh, narendra modi but actually associate means sit there and hear krishna katha inquire this is my life schedule this is the time i wake up this is the time this many meals i have this is the quality of my chanting find a senior vaishnav sit in private and take consultation that what kind of lifestyle how can i chalk a life sketch a lifestyle that i can plan my week then you be under guidance apart from that during the week we have to associate through the lectures we may not be able to associate in person because that's only for the weekend but during the weekdays we have to hear hari katha vani seva and vapu seva for example we see narad muni and vyasadev how many times did they associate once dhruva maharaj and narad muni once valmiki muni and narad muni once pralad maharaj and narad muni once manigreev nalakuer narad muni once we see all the life changing meetings have been once but what has influenced them is the instructions it goes on our prabhupad met prabhupad saraswati thakur very few times but then he took that inspiration and continued so the point is even during the week if we are not able to physically associate with great vaishnavas we should hear hari katha we should try to keep hearing one class two classes a day as soon as we wake up we put the class we are brushing our teeth and class is going on you know have a speaker even when we are bathing the speaker can be on and we are hearing hari katha every single day while we are putting tilak hari katha is going on while honoring prasadam hari katha is going on while we drive to work hari katha is going on and as we go off to sleep hari katha is going on so even while being in a very competitive very ambitious work profile and and work environment we can still hear hari katha that will keep us in sane consciousness and then you keep practicing the more we hear we do it even for 6 months you will see by hearing attentively every single day the positive decision making spiritual on the path of spiritual life will be inspired by the paramatma so these are some some thoughts that we can incorporate and then the more we succeed in this life's uh, you know schedule krishna will be impressed and he will give us the ability maybe for a change in profile or maybe a change of city where there's more conducive krishna conscious atmosphere okay i hope that answers the question we will take one last um, hare krishna prabhu ji hare krishna mata ji uh, prabhu ji uh, last year aapke hi bade is matlab main apna sabhagya samjhunga ki aapne itna acha uh, uh, last time bataya tha same uh, aaj ke din hi maine aapke lecture mein भगवान के सौभाग्य से कि अटेंड किया था और आपने जस्ट वो बोला था कि कार्तिक मंथ की महिमा कितनी होती है 
जो पूरे मंथ व्रत रखते हैं और अगर नहीं भी रख सकते तो पांच दिन का आपने भीष्म पंचक मंत्र आपने बताया था कि भीष्म पंचक का व्रत रखने और वो ही सुन के मैंने लास्ट ईयर जस्ट आज सुनी हूँ और कल से लगना था तो मैंने किया था और बहुत अच्छे से हुआ था प्रभु जी और इस साल भी आ, आ, कल से लग रहा है प्रभु जी तो मुझे सिर्फ ये लास्ट ईयर तो मुझे ध्यान था अभी मुझे ध्यान है कि क्या मनोभाव होना चाहिए तो मैंने वो बहुत अच्छे से किया था और बहुत अच्छे से मेरा हो भी गया था प्रभु जी आपके आशीर्वाद से तो वो मनोभाव क्या होना चाहिए या मंत्र कुछ बोलते हैं कि तर्पण वगैरह का मंत्र होता है वो एक बार आप याद दिला दीजिए या थोड़ा सा एक फ्रेश हो जाएगा ताकि मैं उसी भाव से रख सकूँ और पाँच दिन एकदम बढ़िया से पूरे मनोभाव से मैं कर सकूँ अच्छी तरह से और आपका आशीर्वाद प्रभु जी दीजिए क्योंकि आपने जब जब मेरे लिए प्रार्थना की है मुझे दो से तीन बार आपसे बात करने का मौका मिला है तब तब मेरा लाइफ चेंज बहुत हुआ है कि ये प्रार्थना करिएगा प्रभु जी कि मैं शुद्ध भक्ति को प्राप्त कर सकूं जैसा हमेशा आप बोलते हो कि हमारा हमारा जो ये जीवन है वो सिर्फ शुद्ध भक्ति में ही होना चाहिए तो उसके लिए बस प्रभु जी आशीर्वाद दीजिएगा कि मैं उस लेवल तक पहुँच पाऊँ उसका एक बोन मेरे ऊपर है ताकि मुझे और कुछ नहीं चाहिए सिर्फ शुद्ध भक्ति चाहिए उसमें कहीं मैं भटकू नहीं प्रभु जी श्रीवासिदी हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे what is the mood the mood is that these are the last 5 days of our life jeevan ke aakhri 5 din hai these are the last 5 days of our life sometimes people may say what after that actually every day should be lived like that every day श्रोतव्यादी राजेन्द्र नृणाम सन्ति सहस्रशः अपश्यताम आत्मतत्वम गृहेषु गृहमेदिनाम आयु वयति वै पुंसा उद्यम अस्तम चयन असौ अस्थे यत्णोनीत उत्तम श्लोक वर्तया श्रीमद्भागवत डिस्क्राइब्स दैट पीपल जनरली हेव लॉर्ड ऑफ टॉपिक्स टू टॉक अबाउट कंटिन्यूअसली टॉकिंग 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 इफ दे साइलेंस देन दे मस्ट बी सम टॉकिंग आई मस्ट टॉक समथिंग आई मस्ट से समथिंग अदरवाइज वॉट्स कैन हैपन दिस साइलेंस सो दैट्स नॉट गुड that kind of mentality of constant talking is not good so during these 5 days we should try to maunam sarvartha sadhanam we should try to speak less and chant more and we should think these are the last 5 days of our life what after that oh krishna is so kind that he extended our life <laughs> to another 11 months and and, uh, and then we can see another kartik so every day must be lived in that spirit Every day is Bhishma Panchak. Every month is Kartik. Every day is Ekadashi. Every day is a day of Bhajan. It's not that these five days and then after that we relax. No, every day is important for Bhajan. We are living, we are breathing for Krishna Bhajan. Nothing else. Prema Dhana Bina Vyartha Daridra Jivan. Shastra describes without Prema Dhan, without Bhakti, our life is zero. but if we are not able to do it every day then at least 5 days out of 365 days so the feeling should be no wasting time no gossiping no criticizing i will chant i will hear i will worship these five things i will do i will worship the deities of radha and krishna or the pictures of radha and krishna i will chant their glories and their holy names i will hear about them i will think about them and i will offer obeisances shila raghunath das goswami calls these five to be the panchamrit abhishek kya hai ye panchamrit abhishek to hear about them to chant about them to worship them in the form of the deities to remember them and to offer obeisances or parikrama these five things we should try to trick our mind in the next five days to constantly keep and if there's any busy schedule we should say paanch din baad कहीं जाना है पांच दिन बाद कहीं मीटिंग है कुछ अगर इतना अर्जेंट नहीं है तो पांच दिन बाद फ्राइडे के बाद देख लेंगे इफ वी आर एबल टू दैट्स ग्रेट फाइव डेज ऑफ जस्ट भजन पांच दिन तो प्रभु के नाम तो दे ही सकते हैं ना प्रभु श्वास भरते हैं दिन रात 
फेफड़ों में श्वास भरते हैं तो हम पांच दिन तो प्रभु के नाम दे ही सकते हैं तीस चालीस पचास साल बीत गए भजन के बिना फोर्टी फिफ्टी इयर्स इन आवर बॉडी इज लॉस्ट विदाउट एनी भजन एटलीस्ट फाइव डेज वी कैन गिव एंड भीष्म देव विल बी वेरी प्लीज एंड विल ऑफर स्पेशल ब्लेसिंग सो आई के नॉट ब्लेस बट राधा रानी इज वेरी काइंड टू ब्लेस सो आई सिंसियरली प्रे नॉट जस्ट टू रेनू माता जी फॉर रेनू माता जी बट टू ऑल द वैष्णवस मे राधा रानी be supremely kind to all of us and may next 5 days be uh, very auspicious